Is the USS Lexington haunted? It's one of the biggest questions here in the Coastal Bend, and we wanted to find out some answers. So we grabbed the paranormal investigative team. We took them on the carrier to see what we could find. <gasps> what does the warning mean? <laughs> now that was clear. So before we get to the actual paranormal findings, um, we wanted to speak with the Corpus Christi Spooks Central Paranormal Investigative Team, and we're here with the founder, Margaret Prescott. And Margaret, you guys have actually been on the Lexington numerous times, so I know that you guys have actually had a lot of different experiences. Yes, we have. One of the experiences that I personally have had was in the very close to the very bottom of the ship, I was with another investigator and we heard a very loud female scream. And after doing research, I found out there was only had been one female that had died on, on uh, the carrier and that was back in 1989. Um, I don't know, I can't really explain it, but it was just extremely loud. Uh, we've heard, um, voices just come out of nowhere when there we know there's nobody else that's there and all of the different times y'all have been on the uss lexington you've experienced it's never the same experience it's always something different yeah it's always something different uh, that you're going to experience um, what i find while investigating is just to be um, be normal you know you can sit there and just have a normal conversation you've got your audio recorders going and um, and that's when you really capture the most. Uh, I mean, you can do a lot, you know, ask a lot of questions and so forth, but what I find a lot easier and uh, just more informative is just be yourselves, have a conversation, but pause during your conversations. That's when I think we've gotten our most uh, evidence. Would you say that you guys have almost learned or found more things every single time you come on to the ship? Well, no, I wouldn't say that because each time is different. You can go on there and get absolutely nothing. And another time you can go on there and and actually capture something. So it can go it can go either way. And the Lexington itself, I think a lot of people, I mean, we talked about this when we were there the, the night before Halloween, that a lot of people kind of have this preconceived notion that the Lexington isn't even really haunted or it's not the real Lexington. Well, I mean, explain that. The thing of it is, is that um, I think the, the real Lexington would probably, I'd probably say have to go back to 1925. Um, but in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, um, as many times I've been on the ship, um, I mean, I've been asked many times, do I think that it's haunted? And I would probably have to say no that I think there's paranormal activity because we've actually have captured paranormal activity. But a haunting to me constitutes something that's um, dark, you know, not, not really necessarily evil, but something that's dark. And I don't see anything dark on, on the USS Lexington. So I think there's residual uh, energy there as far as paranormal goes. I do believe there's paranormal -like activity on there. But, uh, but I think it's, it's the sailors. They're still doing their job. They're still protecting our country. Uh, but anything sinister, no. I love that you said that, though, because you're right. I mean, the Lexington has so much history. There's um, a lot of history. And all of the sailors that were on there, like you said, they're doing their job. And it's almost as if they're still here. So they're, exactly. they're, they're not here to hurt anybody. No, they're not. There's, I don't, I've been all over that ship from one end to the other, way down at the bottom, and I've never felt anything that was bad. Um, I've always felt like, you know, it, it's, it's just good. You know, I, I, that's how I feel about it. Uh, but there's, my opinion, there's nothing on that ship that would hurt anybody. And of course, when we get into these findings here in just a few minutes, um, what was probably the most surprising thing that you found from the night before Halloween when we were all together? The most surprising thing that I think I found um, was when we actually went up onto the flight deck and we had the uh, ghost portal sitting there and we turned it on and we were hearing a conversation between a man and a woman through there 
and I was kind of surprised. I couldn't make out what they were saying, but as a home night, I think that was the most interesting thing that could have possibly have happened. Is there anything else that you would like to share um, that we haven't even talked about that you just would find is most interesting about being on the Lexington with all the findings, all the different nights you've been there? I think the most interesting thing about being on the Lexington itself is the history that's behind the ship, well, the carrier, I should say. Um, the history uh, and the people that you know we've worked with on the Lexington, I, it was a really a great experience. Um, but like I said, each time you go and you do an investigation on there, sometimes you can actually get something and sometimes you won't, you won't get anything. Well, we're gonna find out exactly what it was that we did find and what y'all found um, while y'all were there on the Lexington. We're gonna speak to your son, Monty, here in just a few minutes. So make sure you stay with us and we'll actually get to those paranormal findings. Bill Miller, again, our ghost expert here at the USS Lexington, has been telling us all day since we've been here about all the different paranormal experiences that people have had here on this ship. And Bill, I'm curious now, um, for you, what has probably been the one experience that really just shocked you, that you've heard or maybe you even experienced on your own? Full-bodied apparition down in uh, passageway damage control. Uh, I wasn't even working that day, but my wife and I were here to see a Vietnam veteran display. Anyway, it was new, so I was watching that, looking at that. And uh, at one point, I'm going to look around and see where she's at, but it's a real confined area. So I don't want to bump into anybody, so I look back over my left shoulder, and there's this young man standing there, about your height, brown eyes, brown hair, he looked Italian. And uh, he, as I could see, he was wearing a light blue shirt. And so I looked back and saw him, then saw my wife, and I thought I'm going to go. So I looked back again and say, you know, to tell him I'm going to step back, and he's not there. That was validated, though, about two or three months later. I had another paranormal group come on here that was taking snapshots. We were down in that area, and the leader of the group happened to take a shot that reflected off of plexiglass that showed somebody standing in the door where I'd seen this guy with a light, long sleeve blue, blue shirt on. All right, so we're back, and now we're actually going to get into all of the investigative work, the findings that Corpus Christi Spook Central Paranormal Investigative Team actually found. I'm here with Monty Prescott. Monty, um, you guys have been on the Lexington, like I was talking to your mom, Margaret, about numerous times. For you, what was probably the one thing that stood out the most before we actually get into what you did find? Well, for the the Halloween special that we did, um, we were actually down there setting up cameras and we we're right by the mess hall. No one else was down there with us at the time and you could actually hear like someone walking around with keys. There's no one down there. You're like, okay, this that's a little weird. Uh, but we definitely got a lot of hits on the ghost boxes. You know, you were there for a lot of them, but uh, we got some interesting evidence from, from that night. I love it. I've never experienced anything like this before. And this is why I'm so glad you guys are here to actually show us what you can find. So I'll let you kind of dive right into it and uh, we can start sifting through some of the most interesting things that you found. Okay, so some of these we're gonna classify as, you know, ghost box uh, sessions and stuff like that. That's a little bit different than an EVP. An EVP comes in under the 300 megahertz range where our human ears can't hear it. Now we did get one EVP on the ship and it was at one time where a couple of investigators had went down, but uh, a lot of the ones that we did get are gonna come straight from the uh, the ghost box and the uh, the SB7 uh, spirit box. All right, let's hear it. So this was one of the times we were up there where the stage was. You're, you're actually talking and you can hear warning come across warning and I can actually isolate it Let's see if I got it right here you can actually hear it so it's you know it goes right along with the history of the ship that is something that would be said constantly on a ship warning people of you know things coming through things being moved uh, and a lot of times we get some that are unknown and this is actually an unknown one. We can hear something, but we just can't make it out what it's saying. Good. See, you can hear it, but it's just so... Good. Good. 
You know what's interesting? The sound, the voice each time sounds the exact same, like as if it was the same, exactly. whatever it was, whether it's the same person or the same monitor, whatever, that's actually making this voice. Yeah, it, it's, you, you ask yourself the question, is it the same spirit that's trying to communicate? Is it trying to, what is it trying to tell you? And you try to take those puzzle pieces and you put them together to try to see if the history matches up with what you're getting on the ship. When, what I'm curious about, once you guys go through all of these findings, or when you get the findings from the first night, you know, when you're there, mm -hmm. how long does it take you to go through all of this? Well, if you really start thinking about it, if we're there for three hours and you multiply that by eight recorders, the, the hours add up. So two investigators will sit down, we'll start just going through it, and you have to listen to every second and, and every minute. And when you're listening for EVPs, you're not really listening for the obvious, like we're talking here. You're listening for that background. You're listening for a voice that you're not it's not a part of any one of us. And uh, that's, you know, it, just little by little, you'll pick it up more and more on how to learn how to do EVP. And EVP stands for? Electronic Voice Phenomenon. And that's how we were able to get these. Well, these right here, it is a form of EVP, but it's more along the lines of kind of like, if you've ever seen the movie White Noise with Michael Keaton, he's got the TV set up. They're coming in through the frequencies. They're using that energy, and they're coming through to try to make that communication. And with the SB7 Spirit Box, you're skipping through those radio frequencies constantly, so you're always having a new frequency. So if you start thinking about it in theory, how are you getting a sentence and how are you getting the same voice if you're on a radio station for a split of a second? How crazy. It is. So what we just listened to, that was when we were up on the stage. Mm -hmm. where, where else did you find different paranormal activity throughout the ship? Uh, down towards the mess hall, uh, we concentrated a little bit through there and we got an orb. And a, a lot of paranormal investigators, they classify orbs differently. Some people, some people believe they're dust or they're bugs. Uh, some paranormal investigators believe that they're energy or spirits. And some of the time when you take them with a picture, you can get a face or a nucleus or, or, or someone smiling an orb. Uh, being scientific about it, we look at it as spirit, orbs are energy. Spirits need energy to try to manifest themselves. So when we come to a part where there's a lot of orbs, uh, there's a lot of energy. So we'll concentrate there more than any other place because spirits need that energy to manifest themselves. And do you have other voice type investigations you could show us? Uh, for the Lexington or different places? For this one, yes. Yes, yes, I actually do. Let's go to help. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remember yeah. this. Help. You can see, you, yeah, you can hear yourself kind of like, <laughs> did I really hear that? And a lot of times with our evidence, what we'd like to do is, is we put, we, we look at our evidence and say, this is what we hear, but we love putting it out to the public and saying, what do you hear? Because just because something I hear, I want the public to make their own assumption of what they hear or what comes across to them because that's what this is all about is bringing the public together to say hey i hear something different it's like wow well, let's mark that down on our website or our youtube page and stuff like that because that's just more information for us to to go through to kind of like okay so the next time we go back we think we hear this one name but we're, someone else will hear this other name we'll use that information to actually go back on and ask for that the, the name the other person thought they heard Okay, so coming up, what we're going to do is we're going to dive in a little bit more with the Corpus Christi Spook Central Paranormal Investigation Team on what some of these findings that they've had have correlated with other places that you guys have actually investigated. So we'll get to that after this break. You have one of your devices. So basically I have the obvious. Basically what it is is a dictionary inside of here that has said that spirits can use their energy to manipulate it and say what they're trying to say with the dictionary inside of it. What's the odds? And this literally says, it says, still says holiday. I mean, tomorrow is Halloween. It said holiday. And it said haste when you asked if it was a male or female. Right. So I wonder if that almost means that that was someone's name. Right, I mean, what it could, could be. All right, so we're back here with Monty Prescott with the Corpus Christi Spook Central Paranormal Investigation Team. And you guys have been doing this for a few years where you guys go to different places, investigate, have different findings. We heard a little while ago, and if you were watching on Facebook Live, you saw the help part. That was probably, for me, the scariest thing. You can hear help. What do you need help with? Do you need help? Oh, 
<laughs> now that was clear. That was clear. You okay? I know. But it was so cool. Where you guys, you were telling me you hear help a lot at other different places. We do, um, like abandoned hospitals, uh, other historical places, and it really gets you to thinking. You know do they know that they have passed on or what type of help can we try to give to them or closure because that's what we kind of believe that they're reaching out to try to a last message or some type of closure a message that they're trying to pass on to a loved one so we're kind of the go between to try to just get that little bit of evidence to present and maybe find an answer to why they're there i know that like what you were just saying with help i mean especially here on the lexington why do you think they would have been asking for help. What, what was y'all's kind of point of view? or? Well, especially with the Lexington, I mean, just being at wartime, the casualties, you know, almost 400 sailors had passed away on the ship. Of course, not all of them from, you know, the, the war, some of course being sick or accidents, but um, some of them might be in pain. It's a residual. It's kind of like we're made of energy and what happens when our time comes and that energy goes out? I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I don't think a lot of people know what to expect, especially on the Lexington. And then when we got there, we got to see it live and really experience just some and, crazy and, things happening. And that's really just one part of the investigation. There's so much more to, to go in depth with investigating and uh, being able just to dive into it a little bit deeper. There's so many levels to paranormal investigating. And let's talk about those different levels. I mean, what else would you, when you're explaining to somebody, what are all these different levels? Well, certain times we like to just go off on our own because sometimes you'll, you actually will get more evidence that way. If you're by yourself and you're in an area and in, I'm a male and I get a female voice, it's like, wow, okay, there was no other female with me. How, how did that, how did I get that piece of evidence? And of course, there's other equipment like parabolic mic. We do EVP burst sessions, um, the thermal imager to be able to set up in a room and just see if you can't get any type of anomalies. There's, there's, there's a lot that, that goes into a paranormal investigation. And of course, there's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of, we've been here for two hours, nothing has happened. So we'll sit around and I, I like to call it, we just sit around and kind of talk and just kind of, how's your day and this and that. And it's kind of like you're ignoring them. And all of a sudden things start to happen because now you're not giving them the attention that they're seeking. So now they're gonna make their presence known to give you some type of evidence. And one thing I'm sure a lot of people may say, oh, let's go and do these kinds of paranormal investigations at night. Mm -hmm. Does it always have to be at night? A lot of people believe doing it at night is like the bewitching hour and stuff like that. But paranormal activity can happen during the day or during the night. You know, there's been many stories on the USS Lexington where a sailor has been guiding people through on tours. They're like, oh, that, that gentleman down there, he was so nice. And they're like, what gentleman? There's no one down there in a sailor suit. I mean, but that, it, like I said, it can happen any time, day or night, but more people believe at night because it gives the spirits more anonymity to hide within the shadows. What other different things did you guys find the night before Halloween that we were all here um, that you've experienced at other places? Um, footsteps. We, I've experienced footsteps at other places uh, like Yorktown Memorial Hospital, um, a lot of the Heritage Park homes. Uh, the uneasy feeling. Uh, you do in certain parts get an uneasy feeling, but I really and truly believe it's because they're like, you're not supposed to be in this area. You need to leave. When you talk about that uneasy feeling, is it almost like nausea? What is, how do you feel? It's hard to explain. It's kind of like if you've ever been in a room alone, you kind of feel like someone's just right there watching you. And you look around and you're like, eh, there's nobody here, but I'm gonna turn a light on anyway. Monty, is there anything else that you wanted to show us um, that really reached out to you or anything at all that you'd like to show us? The Lexington is a really awesome place to investigate and to check out. I personally cannot say it's haunted. I have to go back to the Jason and Grant when Ghost Hunters were down here. And uh, they were on the ship. We've been on the ship multiple times. And uh, I just have to concur, I don't think the Lexington is haunted, but I do believe the, the Lexington is very well staffed. And I believe that the sailors are still on the ship, doing their duty, protecting this country and protecting the ship that they love. All right, well, you heard him. Is the Lexington haunted? Really, that's up for you to kind of decide. You've seen all of the findings from the experts themselves to really figure out what it is that's on the Lexington. Of course, we'll find out a little bit more right after this break. All right, so we've already gone through all of the USS Lexington findings. Again, you guys can decide exactly 
is it haunted or not? We'll let you guys figure that out. But we're still here with another expert from the Corpus Christi Spook Central Paranormal Investigative Team, Shauna Davis. Shauna, you guys have actually been to the Burklair Mansion, which is in Beeville, and that's where we'll be heading next. What are the different things that you guys have experienced out there that we can kind of expect next time? So at Burklair Mansion, um, the mansion's been around since 1936. It was built in 1936. Um, it housed four, five sisters. Uh, the oldest sister had it built after their um, childhood home burnt down and she wanted something that was would stay safe for her family um so sorry my mask keeps going down um so she wanted something safe for her family some things that we've captured at burglar mansion um we've gotten some shadow figures um we've seen orbs uh we've gotten um of course different evps um that could possibly be the sisters uh something that's pretty Sorry. So that's pretty cool about the uh, Burklair Mansion is the history behind it. And of course you have to watch to get a lot of the history. I'm not gonna give it all away. Um, but I will say that each sister had their own individual style. Um, their rooms um, are all different. But another thing that's kind of neat is normally when you live with family, there's one stove, one thing for everybody. Doesn't need their own thing. But when it came to the sisters, each sister had their own object. They didn't want the other sister cooking for them. So each sister had their own stove, their own sink, their own little thing. If they went and bought cookbooks, each sister had their own coffee. Really unique situation. Yeah. I'm very excited. And I know you were telling me earlier that you're excited for this one, for all of us to go there. Yes, I actually love Burkhara Mansion, not just because of the history that's attached to it, but the home itself. You can't see a home like that. She paid a little less than $50,000 to have the home built. Could you imagine having a huge mansion built for $50,000 today? That's not barely even a down payment on a good size house. So it's got history, it's got space, and when you see it, you're gonna be amazed by it. We are so excited, and of course, you guys will get to see that next time. We're gonna be there with the Corpus Christi Speak Central Paranormal Investigative Team. We got more coming for you. Again, we'll see you guys next time at the Burklair Mansion.